education and technology has to be combined with economical upliftment. Unless and until we strive to do that, we cannot implement online education full-fledgedly in India. Of course, there are students like the girls in Behuria who are eager to use technology for learning purpose. They are eager to walk. They are ready to walk for miles and come to, the, come to Calcutta from their villages and learn English. So such students are, of course, rare. But then, if we try hard to promote online education as much as we can, whether it be through Moodles or any kind of other devices, where we can share our contents, share our views, and collaborate, and make online teaching successful. Would all, anyone like to ask me anything? We don't have much time left. Are there any questions or comments? Oh, Tom, you're here. Great. We need the link to the course feed so we can uh, continue the discussions. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. There's the uh, link to continue the discussions uh, in Indita and everyone. Okay. And uh, there we can start a community, if you like. We can plan, Susan, the community, how to do it and so on and how to uh, get together so we can help. By the way, in Indita, I don't know if you heard the, uh, the presentation by Tony Carr from South Africa. Uh, Susan, I believe you were not here. He also mentioned the need to connect with educators from around the globe so that uh, we can help in Africa, Asia, and other parts. And one way he suggested is by having an online conference. He calls yeah. it the Emerge. And this way we can get more people involved. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, I don't know if you're seeing this. Um, and in Dita, uh, De Gibril says that he doesn't think that online learning is good for, I guess he means underdeveloped countries, but very good for, develop, for developing countries. He's from Algeria. And I'm wondering if uh, the governments of these countries don't feel the same way, that uh, maybe it's better to, first of all, uh, connect with people in a face-to-face -face situation and then maybe go on with uh, technology. You can combine technology and face-to-face -to, -face to make them know something about it or educate them about technology, yes, you need to have a face-to-face -face teaching. But then, once they learn about technology, I'm sure they would like to also learn something online and use technology for learning. And I want to add here, when you say online, you don't necessarily mean computers or laptops. We're also talking about mobile systems and cell Tablets, phones, yes, ta yes, cell yes, phones yes. that take a lot less bandwidth and they have different systems uh, other than the internet. I know that in Africa, they're using cell phones and they're connecting in ways that go beyond the internet because the internet is a problem, definitely. Yes. 
because internet at times depends on the climate too. If the climatic conditions are not good at times, that's right. the difficulty yeah. connectivity. Yeah, I think we had that experience a few years ago with the monsoons. I think it was the... Uh... Yeah, 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 that's it, that's it, that's it. Yeah. No, I think it was, no, it was 2011. I think it was in uh, Moodle Moot uh, for 2011. I'm not sure, but yes, it was really terrible. Yes, 2011. 11. 2011. <laughs> yeah. That's why I said never again uh, with a monsoon. But not just in India, by the way. It also happens in Italy. Every winter in Italy, I get uh, people uh, complaining about the rain in Italy and the fact that when it rains in Italy, they don't have internet connections. Like, things really go bad. So you don't need a monsoon uh, to uh, make things bad with the internet. Okay, so that's why nobody we, we have the tablet or the mobile phones, yeah. which the smartphone, the iPhones that we can use to connect, even teach students. So that is technology. Uh, Pablo, <laughs> I see what you're writing there. There are a lot of accusations about technology. Uh, causing young people to behave in uh, emotional ways because they've never learned how to communicate face-to-face. Uh, -face. But I think that's a problem in general about communication, that schools don't really uh, devote time to our humanities, but they devote more time to exams and content. And I think that Ente Dita mentioned at the beginning that the schools... Yes promote exams it's it's learning content and being tested on content instead of uh, learning about you know our humanness and how we can uh, communicate better and be better people and and so on yes education mm -hmm. getting commercialized so that's what we are Learners are not remaining learners and educators are not remaining educators anymore. Yeah. So we have to separate that. Have to, to learn. We have to learn in a dedicated way. To educate, we have to educate in a dedicated way. The value of learning, the value of honing knowledge has to be promoted once again. Yeah, I see a lot of comments there. So let's continue the discussions. I think our time uh, is almost up. If we can continue the discussions, uh, because uh, what we say today, uh, you know, can be continued tomorrow, and that's what technology is about. So thank you so much, Ndadita. We've got another session from Ghana uh, in South America. And uh, Len is also experiencing a lot of uh, issues with connectivity. So I'm looking forward to that. And thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Yes, it was a wonderful presentation. Thank you, Andadita. It's always a great to hear from uh, passionate educators, people who are passionate about uh, sharing. And we did learn quite a bit. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.